Symbols are an essential aspect of Chinese culture, including, of course, the ancient art of jade carving. When you think jade, a disc or a bee may come to mind, or maybe a dragon or an endless knot. But what do these symbols mean? Today, I'm here with Don Kay, one of the founders of the leading supplier of natural jadeite jade jewelry since 1976, none other than Mason K. Jade. Don, thank you for joining us today. Hi, nice to be here. Let's get right down to it. Let's start with the B, spelled P-I, a round disc with a hole in the middle, an image commonly seen in Chinese historical artifacts and jade jewelry today. Don, what does this iconic symbol represent? It has a very long history. It's, it's one of the longest things carved in jade. But it's a pagan symbol. The classical B is really much larger. It really wasn't jewelry until much later. It was huge. Uh, sometimes, you know, a foot across, and it represented uh, the heavens, the sun. In burial jade, the deceased is is, uh, is laid to rest with a, a bee under his head and a tsung on his chest. That's it. Tsung, you know, represents the earth, bee, the heavens, so you're residing between heaven and earth, as it were. It became jewelry, oh, I don't know, a few hundred years ago, really. A bee really has to be kind of formalized. A hole can't be too big. It's called an annular ring or a hololith. It should be about a third to a quarter of the diameter of the whole thing to be, you know, a bee. That's, I think, probably the symbol that is most asked about. Would you say it's one of the more common symbols in jade jewelry? A lot of reasons for that. Yeah, it is. Uh, number one, it's easy to cut. If you cut, you know, if you're cutting a your jade rough, you've got a bunch of stuff left over. Sometimes not thick enough for a calf, sometimes not big enough for a carving. What are you going to do? Well, a bee is pretty good. You can do lots with it. So, yeah, it's practical. Uh, it's also very popular. I've been wearing this one for 40 years. This wow. Is really, yeah, that's, that's kind of a nice one. It is. Yeah, I, I like to wear jade, and it's supposed to be close to the skin. Can't get closer. Do you rub it? Do you rub it like a worry stone? Actually, I do from time to time. Does it help? Well, I haven't been hit by a car yet, you know. So. <laughs> I like jade very much. I like wearing it. I like feeling it. Don, we see a bat carved in jade a lot. Bat earrings, bat pendants, even yeah. just worry stones. What does the bat mean? Well, don't forget that, that, that Chinese is a language of, uh, of symbols. It's very much like a rebus. That is, in English, a rebus is a... A drawing that represents a word, and it's common in cartoons. Well, really, that's the origin of language, and for Chinese, the rebus is the language. So, it's not uncommon that when two things sound alike, you represent them the same. So, Chinese word for fortune is fo, and fo is also the word for bat. So, therefore, a bat must be fortunate. You know, Chinese believe very much that a power in the name, that is, say that you take the word for America. There is no word for America in Chinese. America is not a Chinese word. So how do you create it? Well, it sounds a little bit like Meigua. Well, Meigua means beautiful country. Oh, so America must be a beautiful country. And that kind of symbolism exists all through the homophonic structure of Chinese language. So the bat is carved often because it's a symbol of fortune. When you have five bats, it's the five fortunes. There are five fortunes. Among them is to die a natural death, by the way. What about the dragon in Chinese imagery? What does that represent? Uh, power. It's, it's a basic symbol of power. And there's different kinds of dragons. You know, in the West, we think of dragons as uh, fearsome things like in the Game of Thrones or something. Chinese don't think of them as fearsome things. They're very important, powerful symbols. The five-clawed dragon, if you ever look at dragons, count the claws. Five claws is the imperial dragon. Only, you know, imperial types could uh, use that symbol on their clothing or jewelry. It probably wasn't until after the fall of the dynasties, I would guess, that regular people, shoppers, consumers, would even necessarily wear a jade dragon. Is that correct? Like, it probably would have been reserved for only the imperial family. Yeah, the idea of jade as self-adornment for ordinary people came much later. Oh, really? When was that? Well, there's a whole history of the, co you know, of costuming and clothes 
It's always relegated to a small part of art, as is jade, by the way. Certainly by the 20th century, jewelry was established. In the 19th century, jewelry was well-known, but very upper scale. But sure. people had jewelry, had jade all the time, from the bee worn on a string to a bangle. You need no, you need nothing for a bangle, right? Just cut it out. Um, and many things like that. You see people often wearing, you know, fish pendants or Buddha pendants or, yeah, they actually mean it when they endow them with certain feelings. And it's important. What does the fish mean? Well, a single fish, it depends which one. I mean, it, it, if it's a really highly scaled, then it's usually a carp. Carp is a tough fish with big teeth. They symbolize perseverance. Perseverance. Also, abundant fish in general are abundant. Two fish, that's something else. Two fish is connubial bliss. Guy getting married, give him a, a carved double fish or give his wife a carved double fish. Another symbol that we get a lot of questions about, but tends to be very beloved, even when people don't necessarily know what it means, is the foo dog. Can you talk a little bit about that symbol? Yeah, it's kind of later. It's kind of it's kind of more showy. It's a, a symbol of protection. It's a, it's, a Buddhist thing. Uh, you know, you have mirrors around the door to reflect the evil spirits. And the food dogs, as a pair, keep away the evil spirits. And, you know, classically, one has his, has his paw on an orb of the world, protecting the world, and the other protects, you know, you specifically. It doesn't quite look like a dog, no. right? Did you ever see a Pekingese dog? Yes. It looks a little <laughs> like that. It's a dog of folk. I know it looks large, almost like a lion. It sounds like it is its own its own category of animal. Yes. You know, if you called it a lion, that'd be correct. If you called it a food dog, you'd be correct. What about the phoenix? Is that something that you see in jade carvings? Oh, a lot. A lot. You know, the phoenix uh, symbol of rebirth, it, it comes out after a fire, a light on a stone. and The world is divided uh, by the yin-yang principle into two opposing forces often. Yin and yang are among them. Well, the yang is the phoenix force, the feminine force. Yin is the male force, the dragon force. They're fanciful animals that don't have a defined shape, you know. Am I mistaken or do I often see a coin in jade imagery? Oh no, a coin's a big thing. Number one, it's, it's easy to carve. Mm -hmm. Number two, um, so in the West we think of materialism as a bad thing. Oh, and all that. Not so in China. Uh, money is a very big deal. Uh, and the fact that you acquire wealth is not just something good, it's something that the gods have granted you. So you must be favored. So by by saying, like, we would say Happy New Year. They would say, have a prosperous New Year. Also, the, um, the citron plant, you know, the citron plant, the hand of Buddha. Yes, yes, I've wondered about that. That symbolizes wealth also, because it, to the Chinese, it looks like a hand grasping money. And even though we may think, oh, what a horrible illusion. No, no, it's a good thing. The citron plant is that, the desire for wealth. You'd give it to somebody if they start a new business or something like that. I did not know that about the citron plant. And speaking of plants, something else that I've wondered a lot about is the gourd. Why do we see a gourd so much in jade imagery? If you burn a gourd, it smokes a lot and it keeps away the evil spirit for one thing. But basically a gourd is a symbol of magic. It, uh, it If you light it, it gives off flames. It, I mean, it gives off smoke and it's very you know, colorful, and very visual and it uh, keeps away the evil spirits. What does the endless knot mean? It's a symbol with no beginning and no end, uh, i.e. eternal. It's a Buddhist symbol, and if you ever see a, a picture of a Buddha on his knees and his, toe, his feet are upturned, on the toes are the, the endless knot symbols and the other symbols. So wow. it, it's one of the, and it's also a very beautiful symbol.